Assalamu alaikum, salams and peace. Welcome to Sisters Hour with me, Sakina, on British Muslim TV. Have you ever wondered what it must be like to be an actor or an actress? We're here with Farah Sada, a Muslim actress. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam, sister. How are you? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, it's absolutely lovely to be here. I've never been here before. So it's, it's lovely great. having you here. It's, it's a blessing to have you here. Oh, thank you. Muslim thank you. actress. Wow, I love that. I love that kind of title, oh. Muslim and actress, you know. With hijab. <laughs> With hijab. So we've got hijabi Muslim actress. There you go. British. British. <laughs> there British. you go. Hijab British Muslim actress. <laughs> well, yeah, sure. yeah. Tell us uh, a little bit about your, your background, you know, where you're from. Yeah, well, um, actually, my parents um, came to Britain um, in the 1960s. They came uh, from Pakistan originally. Um, I was born here, um, and at that time, Britain was a very different place. I was a, a child in the 1970s, and I remember we had um, a small um, Pakistani community, mm -hmm. and in those days, um, the, the Muslims, they didn't know too much about their religion. My, my mother didn't wear the headscarf, and they were more kind of cultural, although they were religious. They, they, they identified, as, I guess, as, as Muslims. Yeah, and... they didn't practice in, in the same way. So we had um, some uh, Pakistani families and all, all the, 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 the mums we called aunties, mm. of course. And, um, auntie G, right? <laughs> auntie, or just auntie. And yeah, I, I remember when we used to get together and all the aunties were there and, we, and it was a birthday party and everyone would say, happy birthday to you, <laughs> happy birthday to you. So um, that's, that's what it was like. It was like it was a, a very different place. You didn't see Arabs, you didn't see hijabed women. And in those days, um, people didn't know much about about Pakistani people, about Muslims. Every every Asian person was an Indian. Um, people would say to me, "Do you speak Indian?" Um, mm. It was a very it was a very different place. But you know that that's the way it was because there weren't very many of us. So mm. that's so set the scene for for the nineteen sixties Britain. What I think a lot of a lot of communities from Pakistan, India were coming over from the Caribbean as well, and yeah. this was was this this was very new for for Britain, and so trying to find their place in the community and the challenges and and the, yeah. you know that they must have faced. Mm -hmm. Were you part of that? You know, coming from a British Pakistani, yeah. you, know, you were born and bred in in Britain, obviously, yeah. but your your parents coming from the Pakistani community and and you being British as well. How did you kind of British and Pakistani? It's um it. It was it was it was difficult in some ways. I mean, I, I as I said, I was a child in the nineteen seventies. So growing up um, in my teenage years, in some ways, in many ways, I did feel very very British. I mean, we used to watch we used to watch Top of, Top of the Pops, um, and I, I grew up with um, in the 90, late nineteen seventies the punk culture. So mm. I was really into Debbie Harry and Blondie, and then in the early nineteen eighties, I used to love Culture Club and Boy George. So um, we used to like a good a good cup of tea. My dad liked you know the teapot with our with you know the the hot water warming up. That's like up. the proper definition of of you being British. So we like, were... if you like tea, then you're British. <laughs> we used to watch Coronation Street. So in some ways we were we I I did feel very very British, very English. But then in other ways, I mean of course being Muslim, there were things that we couldn't do. I mean, when my friends were like 15, 16, and they started dating, they started going to pubs and discos, those kind of things I couldn't get involved in. So it was, it was like, it was different. And also we didn't relate fully to, um, to our parents' culture mm. because they're also a different generation mm. and we felt more British. So in what the teenagers did in those days, what a lot of teenagers did, they, went back to their faith and they called themselves British Muslims. Mm. And they, they started to practice in a way that was different to our parents. So um, I, I started wearing the headscarf. My, my mother wore it afterwards. My mother is devout Muslim practices, but she wore it afterwards. Yeah. But um, that's what Did you start did. wearing the headscarf in your teenage years or was it a lot later? It was, um, I was, I was 21. I was 21 when I started to wear it, mm. yeah. Um, so that that's what we did. We called ourselves British Muslims, and that and that's how we we felt comfortable. Mm. Yeah. And I guess um, growing up in you know, as you said, you talked about your friends. You couldn't kind mm. of go to discos and and parties. Did that make you feel you know maybe 
I'm, I'm not as British as I could be or as I want to be. There's only, there's only so far. I'm always going to be the Pakistani sister that can't go, um, you know, can't go out and can't go clubbing. Yeah. And... Do you know what? To be honest, I, I did feel definitely more British, not, not so much Pakistani British, but I was, I was a Muslim and I was me. So maybe somebody else might look at me and think, oh, that's an Asian girl, that's a Pakistani girl, but inside... And even now, I feel British. I couldn't, I couldn't live in Pakistan. I'm not used to it. Where, where does this confidence come? Because I love that it's, <laughs> at the end of the day, people may look at you and be like, you know, you're yeah. Pakistani. But as you said, it's about what you feel. Mm. And I just find that amazing that you have that confidence of, yes, you know, I don't need newspapers to tell me that I'm British. I don't need a passport to tell that I'm British. It's how I feel. And yeah. I am British. Where does this confidence come from? I don't know. I think, I think, maybe, I think probably you've become more confident as you get older. I think when you're a teenager, those kind of years are really tricky and you're trying to find your identity. But I think, I think it just happens as you kind of get older. Um, I mean, my children now, they're, they're third, third generation. My parents came and then I was, then they're third generation. Um, so, and they they grown up. My son, my son, my son's because son, he's old, old enough. So yeah, um, like you could have like a two year old, and no one. Yeah, you look very young. Oh, sure. but um, yeah, well, as I was saying, yeah. So they they were born here. So obviously, I, I've been I've been here for so many years. This is all I know. So and how has it been relating to your your children? Because I know generations change so quickly. Yeah. Um, I know, I, uh, as often I always say that, I used to think that I was really young, you know, I'm part of the, the youth crowd. It's only the other day where we had a, a Muslim girls camp, a field of maybe 12 year olds, 15 year olds. And so I'm thinking, yeah, I'm young as well. I'm hip, so I can <laughs> chill with them. And I couldn't understand anything they were saying. I didn't understand any of the discussions. They were talking about all these pop stars and I'm like, I don't know these people. Right. And I just came away feeling so old. And that's only kind of like a, a very small, you know, it's just, not a lot of a difference, only mm. maybe 10 or, or 15 years, but yet it's changed so much. It changes, yeah. yeah, it changes so much. I really thought that um, when I would be bringing up my children, it would be different. I'd have a different relationship than I had with my parents because I'm from Britain, uh, I, I would understand them. But because times change, um, it was different that I didn't, you know, you don't, it's different. There's all this um, media now, then there's mobile phones mm. and then... In Britain, they were talking, you know, in London, they were talking with these street accents and they're using terms which you, you didn't use. And music, music, what is it all about now? What's happened to the music? I don't think there's such thing as music now. <laughs> What's me? happened to the music? So, um, obviously, things are different. I, mean, I remember saying to my, my daughter, who wanted a pair of vans, <laughs> I said, look, I said, in my day, I said, we didn't get coloured plimsolls and call that fashion. <laughs> I said, in my day, you had to have a bit of an edge to be in yeah, fashion. But um, it's, it's, very, it's very funny how things changed and things have changed so in Pakistan as well. Yeah, so quickly in a generation yeah. where we never had, as you said, mobile phones or, or, even, or even the internet. And now it's just children yeah. are just kind of just... That's all they know. Internet, phone, Game Boys. And Internet. And, and what a tool it is as well. Yeah, I guess you can use it for both positive yeah. and, and negative things. Mm. But so, so back to your, your acting uh, career. Um, mm. Do you think the way that you were brought up, you know, the situation that you were in coming yeah. into, you know, being first generation or a second generation uh, British Pakistani, do you yeah. think that kind of geared you towards making the decision of, of becoming an actress or...? Well, growing up, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was encouraged to be in performance, but I was never discouraged. So my parents were quite happy. Um, in those days in the in the schools, in primary schools, we used to do Christian worship. It was standard. So, mm. you know, we used to do the Lord's Prayer. We used to sing the hymns. And my, my parents never stopped me. My mother explained to me the difference. And so um, I was, um, I, I was often doing assemblies with the recorder or singing in the choir I did a lot of that in primary school, um, and in schools in but in primary schools in those days we didn't have the pressure that they have now with all the key stage exams. So there was a lot of imaginative stuff going on, a lot of creative stuff. So artwork, performance, I was involved a lot in that. And as I got older, I kind of got more into my studies, so I lost it a little bit. But mm. I was doing it then, and I enjoyed it. So I think somehow it's just it's just kind of come out come out again 
So, what was your um, your family response to um, you? You know, becoming an actress yeah. and being an actress. Yeah. Well, things. My my husband's very supportive and broad minded in anything I want to do. Um, um, with with my children, the thing is with your children, whatever mum and dad does, it just it's just normal. But they do go through a phase where whatever you do, it's embarrassing. <laughs> so um, I mean, I so it it could be normal. It could be a little bit embarrassing. I remember with my second daughter when I was thirteen, I was waiting for the bus. And the bus was coming, and I went like this: "Just, mummy, mummy, it's so embarrassing! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it!" So <laughs> it's a bit different uh -huh. with the children. It's kind of normal, and then whatever mum and dad do is embarrassing anyway. Um, with my with my mum and dad, because they're from a different a different culture, a different generation, I don't think they really understand the creative arts. <laughs> mm. They have a, a different a different way of thinking, so it's not something that I I advertised, or it's not the, the big hot topic of it's not a hot topic of, of conversation with my parents um however they do know they do know that i have a youtube channel <laughs> i know so if like uh, if you were my mum, i would think yeah my mum is awesome she's oh. cool she's got a youtube account she's an actress she's oh. out there you know she's really cool and, and hip but we're going to discuss uh, a bit more about your, your your family and your background and obviously we'll go into your acting career uh, inshallah after the break so do join us after the break where we'll be discussing more with farah sada we'll see you soon Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Sisters Hour with me, Sakina, on British Muslim TV. If you've just joined us, we're talking to Farah Sada, a Muslim actress. Feel free to join in in the discussion. You can join us on Facebook, on Twitter, or on our website on www.britishmuslim.tv. Assalamu alaikum, Farah. Alaikum salam. <laughs> so we were talking mm. about obviously your family and your children and how awesome you are. Oh, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> but what I would love to know is. Why acting? Yeah, it's it's it is it is strange. Um, what happened actually? It was um, anyone who's got children. I've got three, uh, mashallah. They know how overwhelming the responsibility is, and what um, happened. Um, it was the end of the summer holidays, and summer holidays I found particularly difficult because you have to keep them entertained. Mm. And uh, how many children do you have? I have three, mashallah. mashallah. Yeah. yeah. So it was the end of summer holidays. They were all still at primary school. And um, when they got back to school, it just suddenly dawned on me how exhausted I was. And then just something happened, something clicked. And I realised if there's something that I want to do, I have to go out and do it. And um, so I went to the local edu education centre and I registered for um, uh, an acting class. And um, even when I was going to the acting class, I didn't think with a hijab woman you could act, but even when I was going mm. to the acting class, when I was walking there, I thought, what are you doing? What are you doing? But as soon as I got there, we had a, a really, really lovely um, teacher called Michael who was extremely nurturing. And the first thing he said is, if you're not comfortable doing something, don't do it. Yes. But it was a wonderful class. It was very enlightening. Uh, Michael was amazing. And... Um, it was a place where I could go where you just lose yourself in the acting and you can forget about everything. You can forget about your responsibilities, forget about pay, paying your bills and whatever problems you have. It was it was just really, really nice. And then I got, so was it was it kind of your intention to go to that acting class? Was it more like, you know what, I'm just going to try something new, you know, acting, why not? Or was it like, I'd actually like to go into this, this career as, yeah. as a career, you know? Mm -hmm. I think at that stage it was more of a let's try something. This is something you enjoyed before at school. Let's try it. I didn't think for a minute that um, I would pursue it as a mm. career at that stage. So you, yeah. you did drama at school? I did did it in, in, in uh, as much as the school performances. But in those days, um, we didn't have drama as a GCSE. Oh. oh it was different then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so... Acting, explain to us the process, because obviously, to be honest, I've never met an actress before. <laughs> so usually it's like, yeah, they're on TV, but you don't really know the process behind it. You know, all of the, the, the casting that yeah, you have to go yeah. to. How do you get the jobs? How do you actually, how do you even become an actress? Is yeah. it like you get a degree or something? Or Yeah, well, see, see the thing is, the, fir the first thing to understand is um, it's only a small percentage of actors that earn a living from it. And I don't, I don't earn a living from it at the moment. It's just a hobby. It's just a passion. Um, 
I do have an advert that I've done um, for a charity called R the Reed Foundation, which is being um, run on the Islam channel at the moment, where I was playing the mum. So um, I do have a part-time job, and then I have days free where I can audition. So I'm registered on various websites, which you, which you have to pay for. Um, I have an agent. Um, when you get a certain number of critics, you can go in Spotlight. Now, Spotlight is meant to be the book to be in. It doesn't give you jobs, but... To what, be... What's Spotlight? Spotlight is like a casting, a big casting book. Okay. It's, it's the one to be in. So to be recognised as a professional actress, I feel it's important to be in Spotlight. So, mm -hmm. But the majority of my, the, my jobs probably come through one of the websites that I'm registered so it's really about you. You have to get yourself out there, and, and you have and I guess... to. You have to get yourself out there. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen on its own. Yeah, and mm. it's it, it's up and down. Sometimes it's very quiet. Sometimes, sometimes every everyone wants you and think, is it going to take off? Yeah. It's, it's just up and down. How yeah. is it being? Because obviously, Alhamdulillah, you're Muslim. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you're hijabi as well. Yeah, I'm sure. Like a lot of people have probably asked this question: the idea of a uh, hijab hijabi actress mm. you know how do you kind of balance that both uh, is it limiting but like, the fact mm. that you wear the hijab do you only get specific roles do you know I said to myself before I was going to start going into this I said to myself if there's any point where I'm going to have to give up my principles or my beliefs that's it it's not for me and and I'm, I'm out of it but um it kind of works in two ways there isn't I don't know of any any other hijab job actress so in in one way it's it, you could stand out so it could give you you know it could give you um you get you can get the attention like that but then every part every part you go for every part is very very specific mm. so some parts require a cauc caucasian bald man some parts want ec an ethnic diversity so in that sense i'm no different from any other other actor. But I guess if you're if you're white and female, you can go to, for a lot more roles than than you know a hijabi, uh, Asian Muslim. I suppose you could, but I suppose that that even goes for like a, a, a Chinese actress. I mean, a Chinese actress might not be cast in a in a uh, a Jane Austen a Jane Austen drama, you know, a period drama. So it goes, I suppose. For but you've got to remember, you know, with the young with the young ones, and may, maybe even young Caucasian act actors, there are much more of them, mm. probably, because um, it doesn't appear to me that there's even a a Asians, there's that, that yeah, many Asians. Well, hopefully, yeah. maybe we might see you in a, a Jane Austen film <laughs> one day. Mr. Darcy! You know, oh, Mr. As, Darcy. Uh, as an extra <laughs> just walking by. <laughs> yeah. So, with the, um, so have you found any challenges? As mm. uh, Obviously, you discussed it's you know, surprisingly, I would always think, yeah, you must always get the kind of let's corner shop role, you know, let's put her in the corner shop or let's mm. put her as uh, the, the forced kind of she's going to force her, her daughter into a, an arranged marriage. Yeah, yeah. Are these the sort of roles that you're usually offered or that, you know? Well, it's funny because when I first started acting, I was asked to, to play a, a traditional Asian mum. Sometimes grandmother. Oh, no, no. <laughs> because of the scarf. Um, uh, and I did that for and put on put on put on the Asian accent in it, <laughs> and um, I was I did ask to I was asked to do that a lot in in the beginning, and um, there was one year actually when I was asked three times by students, "Can you play traditional Asian mum in the arranged marriage?" Mm. And I've said I say now, no, I'm not doing that. I feel I've got a lot more to offer as an actress. And so I, I do some homemade stuff on, on my YouTube channel, um, some comedy. Um, but the, some of the, the, the parts that I do get are um, when um, casting directors are looking for a nice ethnic, ethnic yeah. mix. And it's often in corporate, corporate, okay. um, corporate films, which are like training videos, which they only show internally within companies. So I've played social worker, I've played um, HR manager, mm -hmm. Um, so those kind of things where they want a nice ethnic mix. Do, do uh, you find, like going back to the, the kind of the traditional, you know, Asian auntie and arranged marriage, do you find, let's say you were to take on that role, would you have any control or is it just, okay, 
I'm taking on this role and I'm going to have to listen yeah. to everything they say. Would you be able yeah. to, would you have any control or input into that? Yeah. I would find out about the part first. There are parts which I've said no to. There was um, one part which I fe felt wasn't given a good impression of Islam and I don't want to be part of that. Obviously, anything which is advertising alcohol, gambling, those kind of things I won't be a part of. Um, professional casting directors are very good. Um, they do tell you um, about the part. So if there's a woman who even has to wear a bikini, mm -hmm. they say a woman has to be comfortable wearing a bikini. If there's a man and he has to be shown without his top on, they'll even say that. Or if there's a girl and they want her to wear a headscarf, they say the girl must be willing to wear mm -hmm. a headscarf. They mm -hmm. do say that. There have been a few music videos which I was involved in, and before I got involved in them, I did say, is it family friendly? Just to just Yeah, because you don't want to be part of something and they're, they're swearing or they've got, you know... No, no, or there's some, there's, you know, there's some, it, it's a bit saucy. Or you, we don't, we don't yeah. want anything, anything like that. We want it family friendly. And... Um, I, I do say to them, casting directors are very respectful, actually. I do say to them, you know, I can only wear long, long sleeves. And I have... I and they're, have, they're usually OK with that? They're, they're fine. Um, I'll, tell, I'll tell you a funny story, actually. I was going, I was going for one um, casting, and it was just to um, take some photos um, for, for a magazine. And um, I was just getting ready for the casting, so I was taking off my, 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 my coat. And he said... No, no, leave the scarf on, leave the scarf on. Because, you see, <laughs> often oh. when they ask me to come in, that's what they want. Oh, yeah, some casting not... directors are, are really excited. Well, we, we haven't, we've never had one of those before. Mm. So um, it, it, it can work in... Work and I guess it's nice way. that it's, rather than getting someone who doesn't, who actually just, is just putting on the hijab, they're actually acting, you know, as a hijabi. Yeah. You're actually, that's, you're living as a hijabi. Yeah. Do you think that adds to certain roles? I really think that makes a difference because I think when, when you've got the authentic version, it's, 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 uh, it's just not the same as if you get an actress. And yeah, <laughs> no, no. On. Um, Although some, I'm sure some actresses do it very well. Mm, and yeah. it's, it's nice because I always think, although those are the roles that obviously a lot of uh, maybe directors or, or films want, they want the traditional kind of auntie. Yeah. And I just think if... If you're not taking up the role, then who is? And I always just think, how can we kind of, how can we make yeah. it a change and change this this also often stereotypical? Okay, that's mm. what Asian people. Asian people are people that own corner shops. Black people <laughs> are, are thieves, and and it's frustrating because this yeah. is something that's been happening Jeez. so so long. And yeah. and I guess there are um, actors and actresses that are just like, okay, or you know. Well, my ideal role would be to play an ordinary character, like a detective, a lawyer, who just happens to be Muslim and happens to wear the hijab. And I feel that reflects Britain today, and that's really what I'd no, like, like to beautiful. Inshallah, we're mm -hmm. going to discuss a bit more after mm. the break. We've got to go for another break, so inshallah, we shall see you soon. Remember to continue to join in on the discussion on Facebook, Twitter, and on, on our website. So inshallah, we shall see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Sisters Hour with me, Sakina, on British Muslim TV. We are here having a lively discussion with Farah Sada, a Muslim actress. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> so you were just telling us about mm. the, the roles and the ins and outs of, of being a hijabi, you know, Muslim, yeah. British actress I love all these these mm -hmm. different roles that you have you're you're an actress you're also a, a family woman as well you're a mother you're a wife I'm a mom yeah, yeah. Mom. how do you balance all these mm -hmm. roles um my children are a little bit older but that they they do still need me um I work I work part-time and um that was um a deliberate choice so I could be available for auditions but also because um you know, I've got I've got a family. If I was working full time, I work quite far from from where I live. You know, I it would be hard to come back and 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 cook, and I like to have a a, a, a meal at home. Yeah. You know, and I, I I just want really quality of life as well. Mm. So I don't want to be rushing, rushing, rushing. So basically, that's that's what I've done. I've chosen to work part time, and I've only ever worked part time, and it does give me. A chance to pursue my passion which I'm really grateful for. Mm. How is it balancing all, all of those you know with your children with your husband as well as the yeah. acting as well as you know working part-time? Do you know what I think it I think it it works well in that when I when I'm at, at home with the family obviously you have to be <clears throat> you have to be on you have to be on the ball when I'm at work because I, I I work as a school home liaison so I work with families who are in crises and I listen listen to their problems and I give them support 
it's a very serious role. So to be able to go back to the a acting, back to your passion, where mm. you can express yourself, let it all out, it, it balances it nicely. It would be so hard just to be serious mm. all the time. You need some kind of outlet. Mm, and I guess that's yeah. what the acting... Yeah. Oh, because yeah. I guess as as women, we're we're awesome. We're brilliant at multitasking. So you can kind of, yeah, you know, you can juggle so many different yeah. things. Uh, but so when we talk about acting, often as as we were saying earlier, you know, this idea of of being Muslim, being female, um, yeah. and being an actress. And if I was to sit and think of a, a hijabi, or not, let's just maybe not even say hijab. Let's just say a Muslim uh, a female actress. I'm struggling. To think of a successful Muslim female actress that, who's in the mainstream media, yeah. why why is that? Is it because is it our faith that is kind of limiting us from from being involved in yeah. in, in media and so on, or is it something that's personal or is it cultural? I think it, I think it's a mixture of of both. I think when you go into media, you have to be very careful. You have to know where your boundaries are because a stereotypical actress or performer, they don't necessarily represent those things which are Islamic. Yeah. And I think it's also a cultural thing. I think the, from, from our culture and our, our, um, our previous generations, our parents, um, an, a respectable career is definitely not an actress or, or even, even going into, into a media or, or anything artistic, it tended more to be doctor, pharmacist, yes. um, lawyer, engineer. Um, and I think it's, it's changing now. You do see more. Do you think it's changing? Because I know, as, as you said, it's always kind of, you need to get your degree, become a doctor or, or a nurse. Um, but if you said to, to your parents, oh, mum, I want to become an artist, or mum, I want to become an actress, or mum, I want to become a singer, they'd be like, what? I think, I think it's valid. I think that they're valid concerns because the thing about um, acting, singing, following your passion, it's really hard to earn money from it. Yeah. So I would advise anybody who has an interest in pursuing their passion is to get get a, a skill and so you you have earning potential because you'll need something to bounce off you need something to to fund you basically mm. I mean it's all very, I'm on these websites I have to pay for them I have to pay for being in spotlight so it does cost money you have to pay to get professional headshots done do you, do you think it's just in terms of it's the money issue or do you think it's because I found that, you know, as a performer myself, often within our communities, creativity or, or creative kind of careers are often not, you know, valued. Mm. It's seen as, you know, if you're a performer, or you're an artist, that's just, you know, do it as your hobby. That's it. That's all it is. It's nothing serious. Yeah. And it's weird because we're coming from Islam, which encourages creativity. You know, Islam has such a rich history. Muslims, they've been mm. involved in art, in, in, yeah. in singing, in, in so many creative, you know, fields. But yet today, in, and we can only talk about the UK, our Muslim communities in the UK, we look at an artist and we just think, oh, yeah, that's all right, isn't it? That's, we don't value it, you know? Yeah, I think, I do, I do, I do think, yeah, I do think it's probably not, valued it's probably not understood understood yeah mm. it's 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 not understood which is why you know I, I i don't sit down with my parents and say oh i did this lovely song i did james blunt's goodbye my lover with the guitar you must listen to it mom mm. <laughs> yeah. how would you feel if if you're one of your children said mom um i'm going to become an actress do you know what <laughs> do you know what I might sound hypocritical, but I say, no, you concentrate on your <laughs> studies. But see, as a mum, I have to guide them, follow my, my instincts. And I think when you do want to go into a field like this, you have to do it very cautiously. You have to be very strong in your boundaries. Mm. And I think that's much better done when you're older. Um, if any of my children went into acting and they lost their faith, I mean, for a Muslim, if you lose your... If you lose your faith, you've lost everything, really. So um, I would say, so no, you concentrate on your mm. studies. Yeah. Do, do you think that's a, a concern? How do you kind of balance your, your faith and, and having those boundaries? Because I'm, I'm sure you have to be quite strong to be in that yeah, field yeah. where there's so many pressures, you know, be like this, be like that. Mm. How do you, do you think, because often some people would say it's either one or the other. Do you think you have to compromise on your faith? How have you balanced mm. your faith and, and your career? I, I, I go in as a Muslim woman, that's the that's what I'm offering them, a Muslim woman. I've been on I've been on set and I've been fasting on set. 
I just find a corner and I can I can pray on set. I say to the casting directors, uh, "This is what I I can't I will do. This is this is what I I can't do." Mm. So I think. And I think people respect you for it. And I think you just have to, um, you can't make compromises. And I think with, with anybody, any actress or actor has their boundaries, yeah. there are things they won't do. So it's it's no different for a Muslim, you have to be very, if there was a film and they said, oh, we really want you, but we got, you've got to take the headscarf off, that part would not be for me. I, I wouldn't do any Bollywood stuff. I'm certainly not a Bollywood actress. Mm. Yeah. Do do you think um because often sometimes as Muslims when it's sometimes people feel as a nuisance where it's like we have all these you know these boundaries and uh you know can we have this and we can't do this and we can't mm. do and so on you, do you ever feel like in a nuisance or Yeah do you know I can only speak from my experience and I I I have never I don't think I've ever found an obstacle being a Muslim to any of my mm. any of my parts, and possibly because casting directors are very specific about what they want when they choose a character. Mm. So, um, I mean, I mean, sometimes they say to me, "Oh, oh, 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 oh Farah, when when you come, make sure you wear the headscarf." Mm. <laughs> so, um, do you think you would get more jobs if you weren't wearing the headscarf? I really don't know. I really don't know, Sakina. I think so many so many actors are struggling, even without the headscarf. It's it's hard to say. But I guess that's what makes you, you unique, isn't it? I guess it's an advantage, as you were saying, Possibly. to have the, the headscarf. Yeah. That's something that is 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 a bonus. And yeah. I think it's always lovely to have uh, Muslims in places where we're not. You know, usually they're not kind of associated because that's mm. a, a dawah in itself. The fact yeah. that you being there yeah. is. I think Maybe so. someone's never met a, a Muslim before. Yeah, you being there, yeah. it's like, you know what? You can, Muslims, we can smile. You we know, can smile. <laughs> surprisingly, <laughs> we do laugh. We're normal people. Yeah. Do you see it as a, your, your work as a form of, you know, are you, are you kind of, because what, especially as hijab is, when we put it on, it's like we are representing Islam now. Any yeah. little thing that we yeah. do, it's going to come back to, not ourselves, it's going to come back to, oh, that's Muslims. Mm. Do you feel a responsibility? I, I, th I, I've always felt that, um, it just just to just by the way you you behave or where you go it's a very implicit kind of uh dawah and people learn about islam it's a sub it's a subtle way mm. you're not standing on the stage giving lectures but I've, I've always felt that you know that kind of thing what what you're doing you are and that's what that especially especially on tv i i i, I when i i try and dress presentably because yeah. I know I'm I'm representing Muslims I do feel that I am so mm. yeah I think definitely that's yes, something that's as, as we as women and you know we have to, to kind yeah. of carry because we're the, the face of um of Muslims so any you know yeah. if usually we're the first ones to get attacked because you know we look so <laughs> Muslim with our hijabs which yeah, is unfortunate it's but it's um yeah. as you said sometimes it's not about Yes, come to Islam. This is what Islam is. Islam is mm. peace. Islam is peace. Alhamdulillah, it's you know Islam is is peace. <laughs> but sometimes just your presence yeah. and your adab and the, your your characteristics and the way you carry yourself that can speak you know so many words. That yeah. can speak so much, and it's yeah. and that's why I I admire you that you're in this career oh, where thank you. you know often yeah. we don't kind of associate Muslims with with yeah. acting females with, with acting mm -hmm. and, and you're doing so much mashallah <laughs> mashallah mm -hmm. in kind of three words very short i know um mm. how would you give us any advice for those wanting to, to go into acting just three yeah three words three three points uh, uh, no even points three words <laughs> study yep uh research plan Okay, I like that. <laughs> Study, research, plan. We're going to kind yeah. of go more into those three words. But that's what we have from Farasada. Study, research and plan. If you want to know more about acting and being a Muslim female actress, do join us after the break with Farasada. We'll be talking more. Remember, you can join us on Facebook and Twitter. We shall see you very, very soon. Don't go anywhere. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Welcome back to Sisters Hour. We are sp speaking to um, Farah Sada, a Muslim actress. Now, just before the break, you kind of summarised quickly three words that you would give mm, any advice. You made advice. it hard for me. <laughs> That's the pressure, mm, yeah. the pressure. Uh, oh, you said studying, research, study, and I actually forgot the Planning, thing, and planning, plan, plan. yeah, yeah. Can you kind of, I'll, I'll give you, you can, you can do it in sentences now. <laughs> yeah, so, so I would say study, I mean, get yourself another skill or qualification so you've got earning potential because uh, when if you want to get into um, acting, presenting, media, it's going to be a passion in the beginning. So, um, so it was study, study, research, research. yeah, plan. yeah, so I mean, if, if, if it's something you want to do, and whatever passion you want to pursue, I would advise you to do some research um, so you know where, where you're going, which direction you want to take, and, and do some kind of planning, uh, plan how you're going to get there, plan the steps you're going to take. Mm. That's what I suggest you do, but whatever you do, don't lose your faith or your spirituality. If it's, some, if it's something you want to do and it's going to uh, make you give up any of your principles then it's not it's not for you and that's not the way to succeed so I know yeah. you said um obviously you wouldn't if, if one of your your children came up and said mum I want to be an actress you'd be like no <laughs> study but do you think it's it's a field that we should be encouraging young people not even young people should we mm. be encouraging uh, Muslims to go into mainstream media because alhamdulillah yeah. slowly slowly we're starting to create media uh, outlets for ourselves yeah. but we're still missing our voices are still missing mm. uh, from mainstream media and because of that often you know when, when you read propaganda read all these there's no one there to say no you know what yeah. that's not what Islam says that's not what Muslims are about yeah. should do you think we need more Muslims need to be in mainstream media I definitely think even if it's in the back in the background and things are changing now career 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 careers are different you can you know you can do a media media degree you can do a media GCSE I understand now yeah mm, um, yeah and um, so you know to, to be working with the BBC it's it, it's still it's still a very valid and respectable career I mean as far as encouraging children to go into acting you've got to be very careful because it's a career with a lot mm. of a lot of rejection. You don't want to be giving your children false hopes. And um, personally, I wouldn't want any of my children to be child stars. If you look at, uh, you know, Lena Zavaroni and you know uh, things which Michael Jackson went through, yeah. it just doesn't seem, it just doesn't seem fair to to take away a ch um, a child's childhood and mm. and give them that kind of, you know, uh, unusual. I know, okay, okay, very successful on one level, but very mm -hmm. unusual. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage my children. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't. But I guess as, as Muslims, it's, it's something that um, we haven't kind of tapped into. Not only we're not only talking about obviously acting or films, yeah. but just media in general, whether that's there. Media to, in general, know. but it's quite funny actually. If I go for a part sometimes, um, they say to me, "Oh, have you got a daughter? Have you got a son? Have you got a husband?" Mm. And my uh, second daughter actually took part with me in Crime Watch, which she had to audition for it. I let her do it. A crime? Well, <laughs> yeah, we did. As uh, a criminal? <laughs> yeah, oh, we're really? not a criminal. No, I was. It was a reconstruction. So I was playing oh. a teacher, and she was playing. Um, she was playing one of the girls. She had to audition for it, but I think she was eleven or twelve, and I, I let her do it once just to have the experience. But after that, and, and and what else is quite funny is I, I said to my mum, look, if if they said to me, have you got a mum? Do you do you want to come along and do it? And she said, yes. <laughs> oh no, that's that's mm -hmm. lovely. So it's um, I guess it's something that you know we can start to explore and and look into. Mm. But I guess as you know personally, who has kind of inspired you? Who has where are, you know where do your influences come from? Yeah, I I'm really. I like Rowan Atkinson. Um, I loved him in the first Mr Bean and the first Johnny English, and I'm always drawn to nutty people. Mm. <laughs> um, I do. I do find him funny. I think he's probably probably very intelligent because I understand he writes his own, own material. I, have no I idea. think. Oh, but he's um, he's a nutcase, and I said there's something very deep rooted in me which is just just totally nutty and mad, and that's why I'm drawn to people like that. And mm. I'd love to act in. In, in the next Johnny English. Yeah, yeah why not? <laughs> Coming soon, Farah Sada. <laughs>
<laughs> so also, obviously, you mentioned, you know, that some of your, any other kind of influences or inspirations, does faith, you know, as you mentioned before, faith, I guess, does play a very, very important role in, in your career. Yeah. Um, any other inspirations? Mm. Saying. Um, I think faith, faith does play, play a role, I think, in, in, in everything. Everything one does as a Muslim, it's 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 hard to kind of kind of separate yeah. separate them. Um, I I I'd love to act in um, a, a British a British movie, a typical British movie. When you say British movie, you think about Hugh Grant. Mm. Um, you think about Bridget Jones. <laughs> I'd love to act in a British movie. I think Hugh Grant's done rather well just by making movies, earning a living from that. And mm. a good way to pay the mortgage. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, so no Bollywood then? Abs I don't relate. I don't no. relate. No, I don't relate to Bollywood, so I don't think it's... I don't think it's my thing. Or, or Lollywood? <laughs> no. Lollywood? Yeah, that's... Um, I, oh, that's of, that's I from haven't Pakistan. heard of Lollywood. You've got Lollywood and then you've got Nollywood. No! <laughs> I'm, I'm not even making this up. <laughs> Nollywood is from Nigeria. So that's the the African um, Hollywood. I'll have, to, I'll, have to, I'll have to check that one out. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> so where do you see yourself in, let's say, in in five years' time? Where do you see yourself? I I'd love to have a um, a t a t a TV career. Yeah, I'd love to have a TV career. Um, present presenting or or acting. My dream job would be Doctor Who. Oh, Doctor Who. Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's quite funny, actually. Once my agent phoned me up, he said, oh, there's a casting for you, it, and it's the casting director's Nina Gold. Now, I don't know if you've heard of Nina Gold, but she's quite a big casting director. She has cast some big films. So I was very excited. So they rang me up and, say, and they said, oh, would you be prepared, because it was for an advert, would you be prepared to dress up as the Milky Bar kid <laughs> and sing the Milky Bar song? Really? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, of course. <laughs> So I went for the audition. It was a lot of fun. Um, I was heavily penciled in, but I didn't get the role. But mm. still, um, it was it's a nice it, experience. It, it was that. It was funny. Yes, it was funny. What's been your your favourite role to kind of play? Um, my my favourite roles, I suppose, are the ones where I'm I'm not putting on the accent. I'm just playing a a British woman, a, a British professional, really. Mm. Um, uh, I did a nice role um, recently uh, playing Muslim feminist. So it's basically a mm. conversation about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mm. saying how that he uh, he gave women the right to, to, to vote and the uh, right to earn, earn property and um, uh, just making some clarifications about F uh, FGM and things mm. like that. And that was a nice one. It was a very short one, but... Um, my role was Muslim, fe Muslim female feminist, so I liked that one. Mm. Yeah. So I guess yeah. acting is obviously not only entertainment where it's just, okay, yeah, we can watch, but it's also about making a change. I guess you can be an, absolutely. Active, yeah. an activist, an actor activist. Wait, I'm trying to put them together. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the majority of things I've done are there, are there for a purpose. Yeah. You know, they're there for a good cause. There was um, one uh, photo, uh, photo shoot I did for a, chari a charity that, donates money so you know basically I was just a, a woman on on the leaflet so mm. most of the stuff has a, a cause and, and and a good cause it's, it's very very few stuff which is just you just know few, yeah, yeah futile they, they, they usually yeah. have a cause I've seen some of your your hilarious <laughs> your videos um on YouTube and I find them <laughs> and oh. I, I'm laughing now already <laughs> um just uh, some of your videos and it's um you're, you're kind of, you're, I think you're, just, you're speaking to yourself. It's very just you and the camera. Um, take us through some of your, some of the scenes that you've set. Oh, I did one which I was, I, was, I had to get this one out of my system. I, um, you've probably seen the Bridget Jones movie. Have you ever seen the Bridget Jones movie? Mm. <laughs> okay, there's that lovely scene um, in the, the first Bridget Jones movie where um, she's, um, they have the, 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 the song on. Am I allowed to mention the song? But we know what's going on. They have this song on, and she's um, she's just realised that she might be by herself, so she's doing this routine 
to that to this to this song. So yeah. I, I recreated that, of course, with my headscarf on, mm -hmm. and uh, I that I really enjoy that. I love to do my my own stuff. Then you can see the real me. Mm -hmm. I've got some covers on there with guitar. Mm, so you play the guitar as well, I and you sing, and I do a bit of guitar. Yeah. Oh, um, so where's kind of what's your your influence with the music? What kind of music do you do? It's quite eclectic, actually. Um, I I don't relate too much to the latest stuff, although sometimes I put some of the latest stuff on to to try and attract some of the young the younger people. Um, one cover I did which was really popular was James Blunt's Goodbye My Lover. Now what happened with that is it was retweeted, it was tweeted by a Turkish journalist and within about two days the views went up and it was all mm. Turkish people and they were just gobsmacked. They'd never seen a hijab woman wow. playing the guitar. Bring her out to Turkey, <laughs> we want to see her in Turkey. <laughs> it, was, it was really mad, my inbox went, went crazy and... Um, you never know which video is going, going to, you know, going to uh, make that change. You can't, you can't predict because mm. some of them, some of them have, haven't got as many views, but just some of them, they're just, they just become very popular. Yeah. Mm. So I, I love that you're a singer, you're an actress, mm. you're a mother, you're a wife, you're oh, gosh, <laughs> so many labels. And it's been such a pleasure, honestly, sitting and just also listening to your advice as well from someone in the industry, listening to your advice. Uh, it's been honestly... It's been it's, lovely to be no, here. It's yeah, so lovely to, to have <laughs> you, Farasada. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've come to the end of the show. Yes, I know you're sad. Inshallah, <laughs> we hope to see you again for another episode of Sisters Out on British Muslim TV. Assalamu alaikum. See you soon.